Hi, my name is Dr. Lakeisha James, and I have the honor of interviewing Terrence Hover. He is a serial entrepreneur, tech genius, and a published author. Hi, Terrence. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I am fantastic. I'm so excited about this interview today. That's what's up. Ah, uh, yeah. So for everyone that's watching, why did you start writing books? I started writing books uh, because I was teaching my kids lessons um, about financial literacy and there was a client of mine, I do digital media, um, and I was talking to him and he said he found a way to publish books and write his own journals. He was doing journals, so he showed me how to do it. And I made a couple coloring books at first, and then I said, I need to do something that's more um, effective. And at the time, like I said, I'm all, I was teaching my kids about financial literacy, credit cards, investing, stuff like that. And I said, you know what? I want to make a book for my kids. And I specifically made it for my kids. Mm -hmm. But then I said, you know, I'm going to publish it and put it out. Put it out. So why coloring books? Well, coloring books, that was just me uh, learning how to publish books. Oh. So, Because I'm self-published. And so those were the initial uh, stages of publishing. Coloring books. I found those easy. I'm also a graphic designer, so I had all of that stuff around already. So I said the easiest thing to do would be coloring books. So I did one color book called Diversity Kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one was called uh, Famous Castles of the World. Famous Castles of the World. Interesting. Yeah. So you do all the illustrations for your I book? All my illustrations, yes. Look at there. All your illustrations. Oh, I love it. 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 So your first book, and I always butcher this, is like a tongue tire. Money Matters Made Easy. Yeah, yeah. Right? Money Matters Made I Easy. I got it on the first time. So that book is about, you know, financial management for our use. Yeah, for what? our youth. Why did you write the book? That book was written because when I was younger, and a lot of us, we didn't, our parents didn't teach us about financial literacy. Absolutely not. And I'm always on my kids about being financially aware. And I always want to, them to know that uh, they don't have to learn through mistakes because I'm, I'm trying to train them so that they know how to make critical decisions and financial decisions. Hmm. How many kids do you have? I have three. Have three. 23. 21 and a 12 year old. Mm, so do you get on their nerves about financial literacy? Yes, all the time. All the time? All the time. Mm -hmm. What about I don't oldest? think it's getting on their nerves, but I, I, I'm i sure that they don't, they don't appreciate it. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I know when I was growing up, like you said, like you mentioned, we did not get taught about financial no. literacy. Nothing about credit, saving no. money, savings account, RA markets, anything like that. No, no we savings. We learned through trial and error. Absolutely. Growing up yes. in the real world. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, your second book, the one that was just published, is called Mind, Body, and Financial Literacy, yes. Navigating the Intersection of Wellness and Wealth. Is that like a continuation that of your first book? That is a continuation of Money Matters Made Easy. Um, and that's a personal book because as I'm getting older... Well, as I was younger, I did a lot of stuff except take care of my health. Huh. So as I'm getting older, I'm fighting the battle with health and trying to spend my own money. So I'm realizing that, you know, you have to be mentally, uh, mental health, physical health, and financially literate I think to enjoy all three. Yeah, I think as we get older, I think we're more self conscious like yes. older older i know for women like women were really big on going to the doctor and things like that but men it's like it takes something to happen to you guys to actually yes, go does. to the doctor so did anything happen to you to give you that push to go to the doctor it did um in my 30s i'm not gonna tell you how old i am but in my 30s days. um i was driving down the street and i thought i was having an asthma attack mm -hmm. And luckily, a block away, uh, there was a hospital. And when I went, I drove myself to the hospital. And I have, I was driving a stick shift. So it was kind of hard to Absolutely. keep my breath and, and, and 
get there. And when they diagnosed me, they told me that I wasn't having an asthma attack, but I was having congestive heart failure. Really? Yes. You say you was in your 30s. I was in my 30s. I was 32. Hmm. Now, that didn't say that happened. Was that like a... Um... Like a push for you to write the second book when it comes to wellness and health? Um, yeah, that was that was a push for me to write the book, to let you know people know that it's not just about being financially literate, but it's about mental health and physical health also. Absolutely. I think when your finances are not in order, it does affect your health. It does. So that's a good point. Yeah. Very good point. Everything Very good point. Coincides. <laughs> Absolutely. It's how the body functions. So how do you feel about financial literacy, do you think it's like the most important thing right now? Because I, the way the world is going, everything is kind of high. Yeah. People not able to save money. They're not actually making enough money. Well, I, I think financial literacy is very important uh, because you have to. Not only does it teach you how to budget, mm -hmm. save, and prepare for your future, but it also teaches you critical thinking. That's true, it does. So it teaches you, you know, your wants and your needs, and it opens your eyes up to, you know, things in life that, you, that you're going to want or to do. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I've heard, I think a few weeks ago, maybe some months ago, I heard that it's not how much money you make, it's like what you do with your money. Do you think that's a true statement? It's and not how statement? much money you make, it's how much money you save. That one right there, yes. <laughs> do you think that statement is accurate? That statement is extremely accurate. Because you can make all the money, but if you're spending it, what are you going to do when the emergency comes up? That's true. What are you going to do when you really need it? That's true. That's true. And credit also plays a good part in that, too, when it comes to finances. In America, credit plays a huge role. Right, because it's a number. Because but... the credit, it defines how much interest you're going to pay. Yes. And you can have a... 500, 600 credit score, and you're going to pay 14, 15% in interest. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to having a 650 and up, and you pay 2 or 3%. So that that's a, in, in reference to a car note, you might pay $300 mm -hmm. a month for a car note with a 650 score, a 700 score, but then you're going to pay 600 for that same car with a lower credit score. That's true. That's so true. So that's very important. I think credit is so overrated. <laughs> I just, I just credit, think they do. I don't think credit is overrated. I think <laughs> the utilization of credit just needs to be understood. Yeah, I think that's a hard point use. for us Americans. Like I, tell, I tell my kids that the credit cards are not for stuff that you want. It's for stuff that you need. Because mm -hmm. I know for me when I was growing up, and I'm sure everybody can relate to this, like I had like 10, 11 credit cards, and I'm just like charging everything. Then all of a sudden it's like, you know, it doesn't dawn on you when you have to pay that back. Right. So, so that's where the debt comes in, mm -hmm. the financial literacy, as you're talking about, because right. if you're not educated about it, you don't know. You don't know. So an example is my daughter, she had her first credit card, and she, I looked at it. I checked their credit cards too, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I check everything. I love and um, I saw that she charged like fifteen hundred dollars on a credit card. Oh, what? But she went on a trip. Oh, okay. She went to I think she went to Jamaica or so, one of those places, and I looked at her a uh, checking account, and I saw she had more than enough money in her checking account to pay off that credit card. Mm -hmm. So I explained to her, I said, okay, you see this $1,500 balance you have. So if you pay the minimal payment on that $1,500, you're going to be paying this card off for the next seven years. That is so true. The interest rate kills and it every time. If you pay $100 on that a month, $20 is going towards the primary mm -hmm. principle, the principle, and the rest is going towards the interest. Yes. So you that fifteen hundred dollars is going to wind up costing you about four thousand dollars over a period of five to seven years. That is so true. We never think about the interest. Yeah. But they're going to get their and interest when, every month. When when she realized that, and she was like, oh, five minutes later, she paid it off. 
five minutes later, she paid it off. So did she say why did she charge it versus paying it out of her checking account? Um, no, she didn't say why she did that. Who? Interesting. There'd be probably something I, I do. I, just I think per, I think she didn't realize the interest she would be paying. Mm-hmm. We don't. Over the so, course of time, right. it does add up. Like, and I tell them all the time, don't charge food. Uh huh. Because you're gonna eat that food; it's gonna be gone. You're gonna have nothing to show for it. Mm-hmm. But you're gonna be paying interest on food that you already ate. That's true. And they just like if you get cash back from a credit card too. Yeah. That's another thing. That's another thing. Oh wow! You, yeah. You use your cash backs to pay off your your bills. So. Good stuff. Good stuff. So you recently spoke at Rockdale Early Advantage yes. Charter School. Yes. That was, How was that? That was, was exciting for the youth. That was great. I spoke to the third, fourth, fifth, um, I think sixth or seventh graders also. Um, so the third or fourth graders, I was in their class all day. Mm-hmm. Um, and we played games. We played financial games. Uh, we talked. And then the sixth and seventh graders, they brought them all to the auditorium. Mm-hmm. And we did the same thing. I did financial games and asked them questions. And they loved it. They, it, it went over better than everyone expected. Really? Yeah. They saw like they were interested. Yeah, they were very interested. That's awesome. And then I, I did, I, at the end of the assembly, I told them that whoever finishes the book answers all the questions the first five students that brings it to the principal's office complete mm-hmm. with the correct answers, I'll give them a bonus. What was the bonus? The bonus was $20 each. $20 each. So were there like five kids that there finished? Was, there wasn't five, yeah. How long did it take them? The next morning. Really? <laughs> they took them the next morning. They came in, they called me and they said, hey, uh, Mr. Over, uh, we have five students here who finished the book, wrote all the answers out, and they're looking for their payout. Wow, so, that, was that was interesting. That was, yeah. I bet that made you feel great. It did. Um, you know, at the end, at the books, book signing, uh, they loved it. The kids loved it. They had questions at the end of it. You know, we took pictures. Mm-hmm. They, they were very, very interested. And they also had a lot of ideas, and some of them were had their own businesses mm-hmm. that they were doing in schools. So, really? Yeah. I think it's very important. There's so many young people that have businesses. Yeah. I it's think amazing. Entrepreneurship is um, is major. Absolutely. It's not a, you know, not everyone is built to work in the office. Listen, so. and not everyone is built to be an entrepreneur. No, that is so no. true. So true. Entrepreneur to be an entrepreneur, it, it takes a a strong person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Trial and error. Yes, yes. Absolutely. So Terrence, it's so many authors today. I'm an author myself. What makes you different from all the other authors? What makes me different from all the other authors is that I have a personal stake in having financial literacy for our youth. Um, it's... That's the beginning of everything for them. Mm-hmm. So if they can go into their adulthood, learning how to make critical decisions and, and decide what they need, what they want, what they're looking for, how to budget, um, how to invest, I think that would give them a, a better life. Okay. Okay. Agree. So a quick question, Terrence. At what age do you think parents should start teaching their children about financial literacy? I think as soon as those kids can start asking for money, they should learn <laughs> the value of the money. I agree. They should learn that it doesn't just pop come out of the air, that you have to work for it. You have to respect money. Uh-huh. You have to learn how budget saves, you know, the things you want. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Because I know for me, it started as chores. Yeah. And then look, you get a, you know, you get a fee, like maybe five, ten dollars. Right. And it's like, it's like, oh, you work for that. So I think that's a great thing. And then you appreciate it more. Too, Absolutely. Because you know, you have to, you, you have to do something that you probably really don't want to do for it. 
my eight year old, she's all like, "Mommy, can I do chores and make some money?" They're like, "Yeah." Right. So you, they 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 need to know that value of that right. Dollar. They need to know that it's just not giving out. Absolutely. You know, you have to work for it. Absolutely. I agree with that. I agree with that. So I remember the last time we were talking, Terrence, and you were sharing with me that you did not like to wear suits. Um, Why did you like to wear suits? It's, it's not that I don't that. like to wear suits. Mm -hmm. It's more so that um, I like to show people, youth, that you don't have to look a certain way That's to true. be successful. That is so true. Be who you are, mm -hmm. operate in who you are, and, you know, it'll work out for you. I agree. I agree. Because just because, you know. Yeah, just because you, you have a suit and tie on absolutely. doesn't make you respectful. That's true. Or make you professional. Because yes. I can wear some jeans and a blazer and I'm still who I am. Right. I guess it's just, it's just our relative for the individual. Right. And, you know, yeah. that's just, that's like an older way of thinking. You know, nowadays you have all these successful entrepreneurs and they're not coming out in suit and ties. And, you know, you, if you're not in the corporate world and it's not mandatory, right. then I would suggest just be who you are. I like that. Be who you are. Be who you are. Be who you are. Be who you are. So for the youth that will watch this interview... Someone that wants to speak, write, or just do something that they're passionate about, what advice would you give them? I would, well, you said, you said it, um, just be passionate about what you're doing, mm -hmm. what you, you know, figure out what you like, where you want to go, um, and just go for it. Don't listen to anybody tell you what not to do, what to do, how to do it. It's so easy to listen it's, to the naysayers so, and family. It's so easy to listen to people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's it's because that person who's telling you what not to do, they're just scared to live in their purpose. That's so, true. That is so true. A lot of people do like to live through other people. Right. That is so true. So they, you don't put your, your, I don't know how to say it, but don't put... Your, 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 what you're scared to do on me, mm -hmm. you know, because you're scared to accomplish who you are and what you want to do. Don't push that thought on me. Mm -hmm. I think when we do that, um, I think everybody has had a, maybe a parent or a sibling or someone in their family tried to put that on them, their fears or try mm -hmm. to live through that person. Right. So that's really good, really good information there. Really good information. So Terrence, so what are you working on? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> his face lit up. <laughs> I am working on quite a few things. Um, I have another book coming out about crypto. Ah, uh, tell us more. The crypto is um, a new crypto. Crypto, right? yeah. Well, I think the banks are going into crypto. I think, yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of the financial agencies, money is 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 about to be non-existent. I've heard that's been in talk uh, for years. A lot years. of companies, stores you go into, they don't even take cash anymore. And I just had some so, cash on me. Yep. That's the best thing to do, though. Have cash. But, yeah, they're going it, completely it, it digital. I, I love cash in my pocket. But a lot of stores and companies don't take cash anymore. Mm -hmm. And see, so. that's another thing with the financial literacy as right. well. Crypto. So you started writing it? Or are you the midst of writing it? What would I, it be I'm, punished? I'm I started writing it. Um, it's almost done. Mm -hmm. It's almost done. Almost? Yeah. I was writing that book first, and then um, I got interested and fascinated with the mind, body, and financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So I, I stopped on the crypto, and then I did that one. And that one is finished, published, it's out, and I'm going back to the crypto book now. I love it. I love it. So for the authors that are watching, for the authors that are watching, um, you say self-publishing is best? No, self-publishing was best for me. Uh -huh. um, like I said, you know, I do, I'm a digital creator by skill and trade. Uh -huh. So I do web development, I do content creation, I do graphics. So for me, it was just a matter of learning the steps okay. to publish. Right. Uh, you know, so I do, I can sit and do everything and map it out, mm -hmm. I know exactly what I want. Okay. And I don't have to go back and forth with you about 
no, this is not right. This is not right. We had that discussion. Right. Yeah. So I know what I want it to look like. I know what I want it to read like. Mm -hmm. I know how I want it laid out. And because of my skill set, I'm able to do it myself. Okay. Okay. Well, Terrence, I'd like to thank you for coming and sharing your expertise with me. I really appreciate it. So there you have it. I am Dr. Lakeisha James, and thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you.